Hello, and thank you for joining us for session six of our seven-week series, The Names of God, based on the book written by Dr. Tony Evans, The Power of God's Name. Tonight, we will explore two names of God, Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals us, and Jehovah Sinkadu, the Lord, our righteousness. Our instructor for this evening is Deacon Nettie Stokes, who in addition to serving on Mount Tabor's diaconate ministry, is also a retired educator. We are in for a treat. And now let's begin our study together. Good after, uh, good evening, all. Um, today, as, as uh, Ms. Reverend pa uh, Ms. Ponda said, we will be doing uh, Jehovah Rapha and Jehovah Sitkanu. Uh, the names of the God we are doing from that book, The Power of God's Name by Dr. Tony Evans. Our um, scripture is taken from Isaiah 52, 6. But I will reveal my name to my people and they will come to know its power. Then at last they will recognize that I am the one who speaks to them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come at this, nine, this, this time seeking you. Lord, we are trying to just get to know more about you and develop a relationship with you. Lord, we're trying to know more about you through these the names of God, what you are capable of, what you can provide for us, Lord. So, Lord, I ask that through this lesson that you will fill those that are listening with more information, more knowledge of you, so that they can become more like you, living in your image, Lord. And for me, Lord, I just pray that you give me your power and your spirit and the knowledge that you can provide to allow me to share with those this information, Lord. Allow me to speak as you would speak. Fill me with the information. Clear my heart and my mind. And allow this information to be used each and every day for the uplifting of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. He's an on-time God.
Jehovah Rapha. The Lord who heals. It's taken from Exodus 15, 25 through 26. And it reads, Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became fit to drink. There the Lord issued a ruling and instruction for them and put them to the test. He said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Tonight we want to talk about God's name that specifically speaks with the power to heal, Jehovah Rapha. With the situations we have going on in this world today, I think we all are looking for the Lord who heals. The Lord reveals himself as the Lord who heals in chapter 15 of uh, Exodus. But it's what happened in chapter 14. I, I want to talk about chapter 14 for a minute that leads up to this revelation. We all know that story about Moses and the Israelites and the parting of the Red Sea. The Israelites had left Egypt and had become caught uh, between a rock and a hard place, as you can sort of say. Uh, they had Pharaoh's army behind them and they had the Red Sea in the front of them. But God performed a miracle for them by parting the Red Sea and allowing the Israelites to go through. And then when Pharaoh's army went through, he closed the sea on them and destroyed them all. And as we get into chapter 15, chapter 15 talks about how excited and uh, praising God and worshiping God, the Israelites were doing because of this wonderful thing he had just done for them. But as we continue through chapter 15, we see that their situation starts to change. It takes a turn. And as they go through the wilderness, they hit dry land. And for three days, they had no water. Um, and when they reached uh, Mara, they found water, but it was undrinkable. This led to grumbling and complaining about being out there and no water to drink, all left to die. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, we'd, we'd heard those, the Israelites before complaining and grumbling, but here they were again, complaining and, and grumbling. The Israelites had already forgotten what God had just done at the Red Sea. But God, he has the power to do anything. Now, it only took him three days to forget this. Okay. Next slide. But you see, God has a purpose for your pain, for you to go through certain pains, certain situations, you know, certain problems. As God stated in Exodus 15, 25. There the Lord issued a ruling and instructions for them and put them to the test. He had said even in, in uh, scripture in verse 25 that he's going to put them to the test. And so he put them to the test um, and this situation, this, this test is to Test your trust and your faith. Think about all of what we're going through today. Uh, COVID-19, uh, racial injustices, poor leadership. I, I truly think it's safe to say that we are going through a test. And because he is a healer, he is relying on us to trust and believe he will bring us through 
this test. In Tony Evans' book, he has stated that these tests and trials are designed to do two things. The first thing is that to demonstrate whether we are paying any attention to the lessons that we've learned. And the second thing is that God reveals something about himself which helps to develop our character and our faith. He gives, God gives us opportunity to, to, to see who he is. Uh, keep in mind that you must work through that test from beginning to end and that the process of going through that test is just as important as the result. But how do we know whether we are failing the test. And usually that comes with the grumbling and the complaining and all the excuses that we make. Next slide. What else is God teaching you? He stated in Exodus 26, one, follow my instructions. God will heal your body, emotion, and relationship and circumstances. If you choose to walk as the rest of the world does, you will not be immune to the world's diseases. Healing will come when you do the things God has instructed you to do. Does it have to make any sense? No. And that's because he is God. And the third thing is for many Christians, we tend to go to church. We read our Bibles, we pay, uh, pray faithfully, but then we wonder why they don't feel spiritual, why we don't speak, feel spiritually healed. No healing touch because they have not yet yielded to his control. The key to your different circumstances, relationships, and illnesses are the statutes and commandments of God. He said in, in, in Scripture 26 that if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. So his statutes and his commands are very, very important. Align yourself with them and he can turn anything into something for better than, better than you ever imagined. And of course, for the Israelite, it didn't end here. Once God instructed Moses to throw the stick into the water, it made it sweet and drinkable. And God took them to Elam. Verse 27 states, when they came to Elam where there were 12 springs and 20 palm trees, and they camped there near the water. So you see, God gives them far more than they had. God made what was bitter, better, because he is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Jehovah Siskanu. The Lord, our righteousness. Jeremiah 23, 4 through 6, with an emphasis on, on 6. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them, and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declared the Lord. The days are coming declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, 
a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteous savior. Think back to when you were growing up. You had both parents at home or two adults in the house and you wanted to go somewhere and get something. If you didn't get the answer you wanted for one parent, you would go ask the other, hoping for the answer you wanted. When the Israelites, and once again, the Israelites, the chosen people, started departing from following one true God and decided to follow the foreign gods that were more lenient towards their demands, God decided he needed to reveal himself once again as to who he was. This time, the Lord, our righteousness, or Jehovah, Siskanu. Now, let's, let's think about, look, look, give you a little quick history lesson here. According to Jeremiah during that time, Judah, the southern kingdom, was wandering from God and declining. Israel, the northern kingdom, had long since departed from God and had been captured by the Assyrians. Many more people of God were turning away from him also. So what does this say about turning away from God? Well, the first thing is, the further you depart from God's ways, the more you invite decline and devotion into your life. When you remove from God who you are, you will deteriorate. And I say this again, when you remove from God who you are, you will start to deteriorate. Second thing is God does not like those in spiritual leadership causing more confusion than clarity concerning who he is. God wants those in position of influence to guide and direct his people toward him. Also, a third thing is value classification. Where we take a look at our own value system and try to recognize what values are important to us. What's right and what's wrong? God wants us to know he is the standard we use to measure everything. He has established a benchmark for our right and our wrong. God has to proclaim his righteousness in the midst of all the chaos going on in that time. Jeremiah 26, 23, 6 says, this is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteous savior. Are we not in a state of chaos today? Next slide. What is righteousness? Righteousness is defined as a standard, requ standard required for people to be acceptable to God. Righteousness comes from God. Therefore, we seek God for our righteousness. Matthew 5, 6 says, blessed, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Second thing is righteousness does not always feel good. I, um, and I don't know about you, I, I, this, this sort of caught me off guard a little bit because it, well, there was so much truth in that. When you think about doing right and righteousness, it doesn't always feel good. It's not, it's not always, it can really hurt. Um, sort of like oil and vinegar, it doesn't mix. Righteousness and unrighteousness doesn't mix. You know how you try to do right while continuing to do the unrighteous behavior or the unrighteous thing. You're gonna eventually have to give in to one over the other. So it does. It doesn't always feel good as you're going through this. And then righteousness exposes the sins 
that have infected your life. Uh, so you can deal with the problem and return to a right relationship with God. Think about some of the problems that you may be going through uh, or situations like smoking or drinking. Uh, once you recognize that it's a problem for you and you go to work it out with God, you will get it right. Uh, and while you're working through that, it's going to, it's going to hurt. It's not going to feel good. It's not going to be a quick uh, type of, of uh, cure or anything. It's just, it's just going to hurt it. But with God, you're going to be able to work through that and get it right. Because of Christ's righteousness, you are credited with righteousness when you believe in on his name. If you know Jehovah, Siskanu, he becomes your Siskanu or your righteousness. With Jesus dying on the cross, we had a credit exchange. Our sins went on him and his righteousness on us. Keep in mind that you wake up and get dressed. That keep in mind that as you wake up and get dressed, put on Jesus Christ. As you go through your day, continue putting on Jesus Christ. Live his standards. I thought about how a lot of times people um, have been growing in faith and they will say when conf confronted by somebody that's rude and somebody that has made them mad, you'll hear people say, my old self would have told them off, cursed them out, but now they won't. Now they won't. And that's because they are living up to God's standard and not going back. Finally, if you pursue righteousness, you will discover your spirit being fed. A um, couple of questions. And before I before I ask the, ask the questions or anything, does anybody have any questions, any comments? Um, I did I did want to uh, for anybody that was listening, if you needed to know the spelling of any of these words, uh, of course Jehovah Rapha, Rapha being R A P H A, and Jehovah Siskanu is P S I D K E N U. Say that last word with uh, spelling again, Nancy, please. It's, it's six canoe. It's spelled T, T like in Tony, S I D K E N U. S I D what? K E N U. Mm. Okay, gotcha. All right. I think you did a wonderful job. I tell you that. The Lord answer your prayer. Right. You know, getting back to that last when uh, Jeremiah spoke about the righteous branch, he was speaking about uh, Jesus, and uh, is it let you know how far back that Jesus, you know, coming through the through the ages, how he was uh, perceived coming through. How, yeah, you, I think you understand what I'm trying to say. How they talked about him in different ways to the prophets, and 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 that's why I think it hurt because he 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 suffered for our righteousness, and he was freedom. It's he, by him doing it, we have to suffer. Right, but he but he also had certain standards that we. As 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 we go through, we have to live up to those standards. He 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 was he gave himself for our sins, and of course, we get credited with righteousness from him. Right. One one thing about his, he didn't grumble <laughs> like <No>. the people. <laughs> no. When he went to yeah. the cross, it, no. He did not. Um, thinking. 
thinking about Jehovah Rapha, a couple of uh, questions I had. Can you can you recall any time God has taken your bitter and made it better? Mm. Oh, it's bitter and made it better. Something to think about. Um, and and also, um, yeah. Uh, I I just I saw uh, Glenn uh, Thomas response, but I also remember the same blessing occurred to me when I was dying size. And I got blessed that I had the age and the number of years that I could come out the company and I would have my full pension. And that was the grace of God. It was really been told that I had 90 days to find another job where I would be, you know, separated from the company. But God came through. So he, uh, he's always there, always making oh. it better. I, I think right now God has made my bill a better just for going through this uh this uh, virus. I've come closer to my wife, to my neighbor. I do more in a positive way. I learn to pray more frequently and which is a blessing. And that and and that way I, I feel my relationship with God I grown a lot. And uh, I, I begin to understand him about I still have my flaws. And my foot's gone, and I stumble, but but I I, I see him like Bella, and if I was to purge, I think I would be more. I, I pray the Lord I wasn't grumble as much as I probably would have been ten years ago. Mhm, mm mhm. And that's part of my second question: Have you ever recognized when you were failing the test? You know, it, it said that if you're failing the test, um. You you tend to be a little, grumbling a little more, more complaints. Uh, I think a lot of times we may find ourselves grumbling and complaining, and we don't realize that we are in the midst of a test. Also had some testimonies on Facebook that they also can testify that uh, God is blessed many times. <laughs> Um, also, uh, one of the things that uh, I found part, um, neat uh, in, in thinking and reading about the name uh, Jehovah Rapha, especially when I, the, the Israelites were, um, it, it, it was, took them only three days to all of a sudden forget about what God was able to do, what his powers were. Um, how he had parted the Red Sea, had got them through. But in three days, they had just they had just sort of forgotten about everything. And sometimes we are like that. He he is a healer, and he can heal us, and he can heal us at any time. There are times when sometimes it's, it's, it's our situations are spread far apart. We it may we may be in a problem today, and it may be three, four, five, six, seven months down the line before we have a real another situation again. And we and I can see sometimes we have a tendency of forgetting. But with the Israelites, it was only three days. And of course, the water, the bitter water, that situation became their test. Just like the water that they had dealt with with the Red Sea was, their, was a test. So we will always be in a test, but we're going to always have God there as our healer because of who he is. Um, in thinking about Jehovah Siskanu, uh, how do you see yourself, uh, how do you see yourself or a new person in Christ uh, growing through, growing in righteousness? See yourself as a new person in Christ growing through, growing in righteousness. What are some of the things we do to, 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 to help ourselves to grow?
Uh, one of the things is studying the word. Uh, the other thing is to surround yourself with people that exemplify the behavior that you would want to uh, imitate. Uh, I found out that you have to be very careful that if you get around a bunch of complainers, you find yourself beginning to complain. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful who you take this walk with. Not that you isolate yourself from people, but you make sure that you keep that joy that God provides and that you put on that breastplate and the armor and everything like that because you're not going to be around positive people all the, all the time. But you should like to be around people to kind of kind of simplify what you want to be and how and what you want to become. And <laughs> you know, tell the word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have to yep, be be around those those persons. You can't you can't um you can't be about your, your old ways, especially if you are uh growing in righteousness. Uh you start to you, you start to feed. I mean, you got you you got to be of the word, be in the word, so that you feed yourself. Many other things for, for me, yep. it's letting go of the need to be right, and letting the Lord be that righteousness. You know that um, there are times when you have to kind of pull back and let. Let God be your advocate, and the need to be right all the time. You know, the kind of that's that's the growth point um, for me. Just to step back and say, you know, God's my righteousness in this situation. Nettie. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Growing in righteousness when you, me, talking myself, uh, when I'm allowed. God allowed me to just look back over my life and to see where I was, what I did, what I said, and then to see where he has brought me from and my growing and see where I am now. I can look back over my life and say, boy, I know I may not be what I should be right today, but I'm not what I was because Jesus has brought me, Jesus Christ has brought me this far and in his righteousness I stand fast. So. We just have to look in the mirror, look at ourselves, and do a, a good uh, uh, self-evaluation, self-perspective of where we are in Christ Jesus and where we were in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes. Well, there are no other comments or questions. I guess, Pastor, we can, we can move on to whatever we have next. <laughs> Wonderful Thank lesson. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. You're welcome. Wonderful lesson, Eddie. Good lesson. Amen. Amen. Any, any you, other final comments on, on the lesson for tonight? Any other final comments or questions before we close out? Again, I will share that there are those on Facebook who are following also and making comments, and, uh, and so they've been helped also. So we do have some folks who are following us on our Facebook, uh, in our Facebook group, and they're watching also, so we do want to acknowledge them. Amen. One says, as I grow in righteousness, I lean into God's guidance uh, when anger or bitterness raise that ugly head. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we thank God for, for those who are following us. Amen. Again, we want to thank everyone for their participation tonight. We're grateful that you are here with us and grateful for the opportunity to study in this way. And thank you, uh, Deacon Nettie, for, for leading us tonight. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 For those who have your pages, you can put the uh, your reaction and you can put the uh, the hand up or the thumbs up or whatever. It's always the class there. Amen. But we're grateful for the lesson tonight and for each person. Uh, who participated in any way. I don't forget your uh, contributions. And uh, this, this Sunday, would you close us in prayer, please? Sure. Let us all bow. Heavenly Father, 
as we get ready to leave this time, we just want to thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to study your word, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity to learn more about you, who you are through the names of God. Lord, I pray that you watch over each and every one. I pray, Lord, that through this COVID-19 that you will protect those, protect all of us, uh, give us the strength to follow some of the, the guidelines and to try to keep ourselves as safe as possible. And also through this time, through this racial injustice that we are going through, that you continue to be a healer, Lord, because we know that as we go through this, that that there will be a, a, a there will be a much better outcome. This may be our bitter point right now, but there will be a better outcome for all of this COVID nineteen, for the racial injustice, and even for our in in, in our poor leadership. So, Lord, at this time, I just ask you to continue to be our healer, to be the Lord of righteousness that you are. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Very good. Thank you.